We're we're always owners. Like yeah. I, th- I for you know if you own like if you if you like if you've gone out and like swung a fucking hammer, you're an owner. If you sat behind a desk <laughs> and built a website, you're a fucking founder. Like what kind yeah. of bullshit is that, man? Fuck you, yeah. dude. Fuck you, Greg. Founder. <laughs> What'd you find? Uh, <laughs> um. All right. It's hey, everyone. On roof last week. Oh, I'm sorry. What happened? You're okay. <laughs> Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 87 of the Awkward Water Sport Guys podcast. We are here today with Chris Woodruff, owner of Vero Tackle. Is it Vero Bait and Tackle or Vero? Vero Tackle, Tackle and Water Sports. Vero, Vero Tackle. Ear, Vero, not Vero. Vero, Vero Tackle in Water Sports. Chris, this is your second time. Yeah, thanks for having you're, me back you're, again. You're a, you're a two-time Awkward Water Sport Guys guest. Uh, Fucking wow. Perfect. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, how are you doing, Kevin? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty fucking good from last time you talked to me 45 seconds ago, so nothing's changed. Still good. Yeah, we, we, we have to create the illusion. The illusion? Right? That, yeah, <laughs> like that we're just running into each other. Oh, shit, man. Yeah. How are you doing, buddy? It's fucking been so long. Ah, 30 I'm seconds. Good. I'm good. I'm excited. It's podcast, podcast Wednesday. We'll get all our podcasts and get to talk to all of our friends. Fuck me. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing How's great. The season? Yeah, it's it's good. It's kind of ending for us. School went back, so we're uh, kind of yeah, maintenance same. season, really, right now. Get yeah. everything fixed. Yeah. So. Before yeah. we get heavy into talking about um, our topic today, um, I just wanted to make a quick. Well, I'm going to let you do it, Kevin, because hmm? we got our we got our conference. That's what it. are we doing? By the oh, time we're going to plug airs, our conference? Com- yeah, by the time this airs, it's going to be in a few weeks. All right. So, look, I, I've been wanting to, like, go into the group and say something. I've just, you know, like like Chris, I'm going into, like, maintenance mode. And I, I want to do, like, the hard pitch because I don't see a lot of people coming. We have a lot of new faces. That's fantastic. The, the old faces, unless you're swimming in piles of money from all the great fucking advice I've given you, you probably should be back. Um this year, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about fucking phone sales. I am. And I, I've got really, I'm going to wait to the event, but I've got a really wonderful anecdote that really proves some of my presuppositions about your phone sales game. I learned a lot this year, and I want to share that stuff with you guys as always. I promise you, if you come to our event and you listen to what we talk about, if, if you're not taking the advice from guys like Greg, Chris, myself, all of our speakers that come out and talk about this stuff, and you are not adding to your fucking top line or bottom line revenue, you are not paying attention. I listen to everything these guys in our group talk about. I listen to everything our speakers come and talk about. I apply it in real life to my business, and it helps immensely. Even if I were to, and I know it's not nice to talk about numbers, but I tell you what, just from the episode we did on upsells and the conversation we've had on upsells alone, like I'll fucking put all three of my kids through college. And that is not an over-exaggeration. So the amount of value that's happening at this conference, the levels of the high level conversations and even entry level conversations that we're having as operators, as water sport operators, man, if you don't have 150 bucks, it's because you're not attending this kind of shit. So get your ass up, sign up, Get over there. Let's go have some fun in Orlando. Let's talk shop. Let's talk shit. And let's have a great time in Orlando. September 26th and 27th, right? Yeah, but get um, there on the 25th on the Sunday. Well, yeah, get there on the 25th. Look, we got a little, little, sign little, kickoff, up. little kickoff party. Hey, uh, yeah. go to watersportpodcast.com and there is a link for the conference. Just click that and then yeah. you can – Book your tickets. You can uh, book your hotel. We have a group block that I believe by the time this podcast airs, the group block will probably be released. But um, you can still get rooms for a good price. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to run down a couple of the the uh, program programming we have for the conference uh, because there might be something that really just reaches out to you. It's like, man, I really want to know more about that. But um, some of the some of the speakers we have, we have Douglas Quimby, CEO of Arrival. He's going to be coming back as, as one of our keynotes. We also have we also have Peter uh, Syme from A Thousand Mile Journeys, and Peter's been like a staple in the Arrival community and just like the greater outdoor adventure community. He, I consider him like an influencer, a thought leader. Um, he's just a wealth of information, but he's going to talk. Um, a lot about, um, you know, how to operate and how to kind of prepare yourself for, you know, an economic 
downturn and just kind of walking through his journey of when, you know, he kind of went through this back in 2008 and 2002. It's going to be really interesting to, to hear him speak. I mean, I've always enjoyed listening to Peter. We're bringing back the roundtables. And a couple of the topics that you're going to see at the roundtables are uh, tracking your sales, team, team building, powering women in water sports, uh, technology talk, boat trackers, reselling, navigating Facebook's paid campaign, which I think is kind of interesting since they've changed things, running multi-locations, uh, and then also um, transitioning and retirement. You know, what to do when you're ready to sell your business. In fact, uh, Trish Higgins from Chenmark, she's going to do an entire presentation on that. And I think that to me, like that's the most exciting thing. Cause you know, I don't plan on selling my business anytime soon, but I would kind of like to know what the steps are when I am ready. And I think with, with water sports, typically like you run the business till you can't physically do it anymore. And it's hard to find a buyer, you know, for, for businesses, especially if it's like a very lifestyle thing. So like Elon, to- Elon Musk will also be there. <laughs> Elon Musk will also be there. Uh, we it's have Chris. That is not- Chris will be doing uh, a segment on. on uh, we have an operator story segment we'll discuss later. Uh, but Chris will be uh, to have a segment. We're going to have a panel on motivating your sales team uh, operating through a downturn. Uh, hopefully, we don't necessarily have one, but we're going to talk about it anyways. But we have there's a lot more going on. But this is just a little taste. And obviously, we still have our evening. We have two evening events. Uh, that are going to be at you know local bars. We're going to do karaoke. Yeah, uh, and I can. Ca- and that was told, Kevin wanted karaoke, so we said we're going to yeah. do karaoke. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, if I was a great so bowler, I'd be like, let's do bowling. You know what I mean? I want to showcase my talents. You know what I mean? Because if it's if I'm not making it about me, what is it about even? Yeah. Anyway, karaoke. Yeah. That should be great. Okay, are we well, done? Are we done selling this done. shit? Are we talking yeah, about we're money, done. Chris? We're going to get fucking hammered. We're going to be in a jacuzzi. We're going to be giving haircuts. <laughs> Just don't worry about it. Just sign up. Stop being a fucking asshole. Just sign up now. Do what right. we say. <laughs> Worst uh, commercial of all time. All right. So uh, the reason why we, uh, we have Chris on the show, not – just because we do enjoy talking to Chris, he's one of uh, our our staples in our Facebook group, and he's just very well ingrained in the. Um, it's because he finally retired from playing clarinet, and it's done now. <laughs> um, yeah. And he is actually Kenny G, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, <laughs> Chris Kenny G Woodruff. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we've been called that before, for sure. I know you have, man. <laughs> So, so Ke- Kevin's been talking shit about what? marinas at different podcasts. Yeah, you talk shit sometimes, and and Chris chimes in and says, "Wait shit. a minute, there's there there's an, there's another side of the story." So uh, I say, you know, let's get on the show and talk about it. So Chris runs a marina, and we obviously talk a lot about there, and there is like, there are marina owners that have done really shady things. I mean, Kevin can. Attest to that. A little biased. But, I didn't talk shit about all marina owners. I just talked to shit about the guy who owned my marina last year. <laughs> Not last <laughs> year, like, but the year before last. I'm sorry. Yeah. Fuck that. So, dude. you know, Chris ha- Chris has a few points that I think is important to know. So we're going to get, like, the other side of, of the story. Like, you know, you're, you're leasing from these marina owners. Maybe Chris can shed some light on... Um, you know what it's what it's like and what he sees and basically how to be you know a great tenant and, and build a great relationship with your uh, marina owner because not I don't think all marina uh, owners want to take over their tenants' businesses and run them. I don't think that's the objective. Um, but I'm going to give the floor to Chris and kind of give you know he give a little background on himself and how he got into it because uh, not many of you probably have listened to his. One that was a long time ago. I think we we did the uh, yeah, interview. So, re- give, give us a little recap. Hey everyone, we're going to take a quick break to talk about our sponsor for the month, the Von Mac Agency. Von Mac is a full service digital marketing agency with a focus on tour and activity operators. They offer it all SEO, websites, pay per clicks, logos, content writing. If it's online marketing, they got you covered. As we mentioned before, it's uber important to hire an agency that understands our industry. And the Von Mac Agency knows water sports. Trust me. And they do all the shit that you don't want to do, they do all the shit that you're probably 
probably not very good at, and they are. Look, for listeners of the show, Merica herself is giving a free consult, all right? If nothing else, give her a shout, give her a call, take 30 minutes out of your day. More importantly, take 30 minutes out of her day so she can get you straight on your marketing needs. That's right. What do you have to lose? Head to VonMacAgency.com and go to the Contact Us page to get started. Again, VonMacAgency.com. And most importantly, let them know you were sent by the AWG guys. All right, let's get back to the show. Yeah, so I actually, I got into being in a marina by renting a slip and doing just paddleboard and kayak rentals. Um, how I got to become an owner, and I don't actually own the, this is where it gets tricky with marinas. I think a lot of people don't know or don't understand is most of the land in Florida under the water is state land. So there's a submerged land lease from uh, DEP that any marina owner or I'm actually a VC of the marina I'm in now. So I, I started off as renting a slip and then I was able to buy the lease for a certain amount of time for that marina. Um, and understanding how that works is helpful. Like I've had many conversations with other businesses that want to come in. They're like, hey, you know, I want a 10-year lease. I was like, well, I, I can't. And they're kind of upset. It's like, well, you know, it's not really how I can't. It's actually in my lease to Tallahassee um, that I cannot do more than a one year, and it cannot be auto-renewing with any other stipulations like that in it, too. And they're very specific. Um, and there's other, there's weird, like my specific one, I can't have liveaboards because of the size of the marina no gambling vessels and you can't even use a ferry to a gambling vessel nearby. There's a bunch of weird stipulations. Um, but how I got into it too, a lot of times is, or originally was I kind of ran my, I was the only one that was out there all the time and I ran it like I owned it. So people pulling in, I knew shouldn't be there. I would you know, show them where they should go. I was doing repairs, water pipes would break. I would just take care of it. I would, I would let the owner know later, maybe send them a bill for materials. But I tried to run it like I already owned it. And finally, when he's ready to retire, it's like, hey, man, you know, you're already here. Do you want to just take over my lease? It's about to renew. Um, and so I kind of jumped right into it. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, so, to your, so to your point about the sub, submerged land lease, uh, first of all, I, I didn't know that you could only offer a, a one year. But I'm sure that if you were to put together something – you know, even like, a, like, like, like a, like a non-compete or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's one thing if you have some kind of a, an agreement between your landlord and yourself where, okay, we're, you can't auto renew the lease, but we could put together a, a you know, a non-compete for five or 10 years where I don't have to be concerned about you giving it out to the next highest bidder. So, I mean, uh, again, or, I mean, or don't. like a first right of refusal. Is Correct. That- so you yeah, first one year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in that in that regard, I just I feel as though this is where it becomes problematic because I hear it from operators all the time. Such and such came in and they offered more money, but don't worry, we're going to keep you like this sort of thing. So the, this is the reason I'm hard on on marina owners, at least in our area, is because there is a lot of that. There is a lot of ousting companies, and and if you're going and getting a. a uh, it makes it just, I mean, I don't have to tell you, Chris, I mean, it makes it hard. It makes it really hard to run a business when from year to year, you might potentially, you know, lose your place. Can you tell me a little bit about what the, uh, it's the, um, environmental protection department, right? Yeah. DEP. That, yeah, yeah. So why, why is it, what is the, why can't they give you more than a one year submerged land lease in the state of Florida? I'm not really sure why. It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, they give us a 10 year. So the land under it, I have a 10 year, but I think a lot of it is they want, they want turnover and they want more people to be able to. So in their mind, they're not really thinking commercial. They're thinking of citizens using public land, I think is their mind frame. For an example, we are not allowed to, um, like as an owner, I'm not supposed to take more than uh, 10% of the marina for my own use, which is odd, but that only gives me a discount on my submerged land lease. So I still have to pay Tallahassee yearly for the use of that land also. I can get a big discount if I only if I rent out 90% of it to a first come first serve on a yearly basis. If that makes any sense. And, and that's a commercial land lease. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, single family homes don't have that or if you're under right. like 10 square feet or something sort of like that. 
So then how, so tell, so walk me through this then. So like, what have been some of your ideas? So like, there's only so much you can get out of obviously renting slips and stuff like that. So like, you know, what are some of the ideas or things that you've done to, you know, sort of monetize if you're kind of coughed by the state of Florida, then, you know, what are your ideas for monetization? Just retail? Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break and talk about our sponsor, Boat Test 101. Boat Test 101 is FWC and NASBA accredited online provider of both temporary certificate and full card. Yeah, guys, if you can't tell, Greg takes it super seriously. Have you been taking voice lessons, man? You sound so pro, dude. <laughs> so yeah, Destiny Water Adventures uses Boat Test 101. When somebody shows up super late and they go, hey, we're just on time for their tour, or their jet ski or their boat. And they're like, we have to take a boat test. And then we have to break out the paper paper and they have to sit there for 30 minutes they miss half their time they get late you get bad reviews when you guys can just sms text them a link email them to your boat test 101 affiliate link they take the test online on their way there they don't have to sit out in the hot sun they take the test on their way or before they get there they email you their id and their boat test they're good to go right when they walk up to the door they sign your paperwork and on the water they go it's easy breezy they pay an industry leading commission of 30 percent and their boating tests are a dollar cheaper than the competitors at $8.99 a test. No contract to you and there's no cost. So you can get started right away and start making some money and providing a better experience for your guests. BoatTest101.com. Again, BoatTest101.com and tell them that the AWG guys sent you. That's right. Take your boating test as serious as Greg took this commercial and get your asses over to BoatTest101.com and sign up today. All right, let's get back to the show. Yeah, we're really big on retail. Almost half our revenue comes from retail. Uh, we have a tackle store associated with this land um, on the land side of it. It's not part of the submerged lease. Um, one of the other things I do, I actually run the boat rental business there, but it's an outside owner. He lives in Miami, and I take a percentage of it. The reason we did that originally, too, is for me, seeing they ran it awful. Like, when I took it over, I basically had a conversation with the owner. I'm like, you, you're either going to leave or... We're going to help you run it because the way they were operating was horrendous. Like he would do the whole, uh, the guy that was running it was, uh, it was an employee would smack the tip jar down before he'd let you do your paperwork and be like, all right, if there's not a 20 in this, I'm not letting you go kind of stuff. And it was just, it was run horrendously. I'm watching it as a paddleboard guy on the other end of the dock going, This is insane. And it's made the whole dock look bad. You know, people didn't want to go down there and do paddleboards because this guy was a jerk. So we had to have a conversation like, okay, we're going to run this for you. We're going to take um, marketing into the tackle shop. We're going to be able to book paddleboards, kayaks, fishing charters, and boat rental. Um, and we just take a cut of it. So it's really not our business, but we help run it. And they've been still your rent. tenant. Yeah, he still pays his slip rental fees and all that stuff. And we take a percentage of it. And we're 100% of the staff. Well, only a year to year, you say, huh? But I'm year to year, though. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's funny you say that. Yeah, yeah. So that's how that's is the market the here, oh man? That was unique, but you know that's something we've done. Do, the, do you get? Does he stay pretty busy there? Yeah, we stay busy. We only have five boats, so we have five pontoon boats. So we're only a thirty slip marina, um, and there were a lot of other tenants there before. We had uh, a tour boat. Which that was actually interesting. So we had a, a renewal last year for a submerged land lease, and we had a 40 foot head boat, tour boat. Tallahassee came down, looked at it, and says, You are about three feet outside the submerged land lease. You have four days to remove this business, or we're not going to renew your submerged land lease. I was like, Whoa, that's not good, and that's not happening. So we had to, like, we finally negotiated. They gave us 10 days to remove this business that had a year lease with us. Um, and there was nothing we could do about it. They had to leave. Or we weren't going to get a renewal. Everybody else would have had to leave. Because the, explain that to me a little bit. Because the boat stuck out past the. Yeah, it was about he was about three feet outside the boundary that they determined was our submerged land, um, and they did a survey on it. Um, and that boat had been there ten years or more actually, so it had gone through renewals um, with it there. They just I think they just kind of you know rubber stamped it and sent it on its way and never actually inspected. But last year they inspected. And uh, mm. we had to remove that business. It was the only business we've had to have removed that we haven't been able to work it out. Uh, I was a tenant at a marina, and I had a really good relationship with my marina owner. And that allowed me to get perks, and I was able to get more slips. But, I mean, kind of walk us through, you know, 
what what a great relationship looks like with your tenants and you know what you see tenants where they go wrong obviously you know if they run a bad business that's going to entice you not to want to keep them but you know what are some things that make you want to really like work harder and promote those businesses and and want to keep them around and then give us kind of the other end of the spectrum yeah the ones that I'm looking for are team players like they're going to you know if there's if they do damage to the dock they fix it right away um, cuz that's the other thing the dock is basically a boat that everybody runs into on a daily basis like we take impacts all day from rentals and you know we have a boat club also and it's just a so somebody that's that cares about their business that runs it well that you know, just kind of is, is thoughtful oh, and they treat it like it's their own. That That's huge. And being on the other end of it now, I kind of see why that was beneficial to the old owner. Um, yeah, just being thoughtful to that in the environment and giving us a good reputation. You know, if one bad operator does bad work, we're all going to look back. Nobody's going to want to come to the other. We have four businesses in our marina now. If one of them is a jerk, they're all going to look like jerks. The bad side of that that I run to is actually something I'm going through now. We have, a, like I mentioned, the boat club. They have no staff. They have boats that, I'm not even kidding, are flex sealed on the bottom. He takes them out when they, they sit sideways from one of the pontoon leaks and they take it out for a day or two, flex seal it, put it back for a couple of days. And it just drives me absolutely crazy. Um, and so he, he's really close to getting removed. Um, it's going to be one of the first ones we've had to for something like that. Um, and they've actually had, they took out a finger dock with one of the rentals, uh, completely removed it right off the dock. We were a fixed dock, we're not a floating dock. And one of their renters, uh, members completely removed it at full speed. And he's giving me a hard time about paying for it. And I got a guy that does it on the side. You know, it's like a thousand bucks, have a brand new one put in. Not crazy expensive, but he's giving me a hard time about it. And I just went ahead and had it fixed. And now he's not wanting to pay for it. It's like, is this really worth it for you to like not want to fix this? Is there anything like in your, in your contracts about, you know, the doc? ruining the dock and having to pay for it or it is it says they're they're yeah. responsible for anything they do um my guy will fix it but i will send them a bill um because i didn't want to send them having like a handyman come in and fix it and then not be safe or correct um but my guy's you know he's great and he does it on the side on the weekends and after work he's an actual dock builder but he kind of does it on the side which is it just works out great for everybody do you have to do you have to let the state know when you make like amendments to the dock or change a dock or drop pilings or anything like that? Or can you configure the dock within the submerged land lease how you want? The configuration has to be the same, but we can do repairs as we need. Um, they encourage that. That's actually part of it that we have to. So if I have a drop finger dock, I have to fix it um, as soon as possible. Um, I cannot, pylons are a tricky one. Um, technically it says you can repair them, which I would assume is replaced, but we've actually had trouble with that, trying to replace them and then giving us a hard time. Um, so, so any structure that's more than um, a certain square footage, they require approval. Do you, do you all have to often deal with like disputes between tenants? Is that is that like a problem at your marina? Um, or has or has it ever been? It hasn't so far in the last like three years. Because um, I've only had it three years now. Um, yeah, it's mostly the, honestly the tricky part. There's no software to help us track who's paid and when. So it's all on paper. Um, I'm actually working with Fair Harbor now on our back end with our agent to get the slips built in so that we can actually see who's paid and when. Um, oh. That's been kind of a challenge. We're literally doing it old school right now because I haven't found anything. So what's next for you, man? Like, What do you want to do next? Next is probably more retail, to be honest. I'm really leaning into that. Um, we're going to do more outdoor recreation type water sport uh, retail, paddleboard, kayak, fishing gear, uh, but on the mainland. Um, I'm really kind of doubling down on that. Um, that and more beach stuff. Uh, I love the model of uh, less maintenance. Boats are, as I'm seeing my business partner, basically, you know, the maintenance costs and fuel costs and, and our labor is going up. Um, it's a tough one. It's almost like running a restaurant. You know, your costs are so high that you don't always make a ton of money. Uh, so I like beach chairs. They last me three to five years. Um, I make money on them every day. I like kayaks because I make money on them all the time and I only have to replace them every two years. Um, they're just super low maintenance and you can flip them and turn and burn. Man, yeah. Well, that's awesome, dude. Well, it sounds like everything's going good there in Vero Beach, man. Uh, is it Vero Beach or just Vero? Uh, Vero Beach. Yeah. <laughs> Technically Vero yeah. Beach. We call it Vero too. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. like that's what people call it, like Dustin Beach or whatever. Yeah. Chris, how's that? So we talked a little bit just quickly. Kevin asked how your season was. Um, 
you know, was it as wet down there as it was up here? I mean, it literally rained every freaking day this summer up here. I mean, we just. Yeah, no, not as bad as you guys. I've been watching, since you mentioned on the podcast, been watching and, and feeling your pain. Um, March was horrible. It was really bad. We rained all March. Um, so we were down probably 30% in March. Um, but the rest of the summer, we actually did really well. Yeah, I think uh, we just kind of winding down from our summer season. And it de- I mean, I don't look at 2021. I look at 2019 and 2020 kind of have a as a benchmark. And Definitely did better, but I mean, we could have done a lot better. Could have gone pretty damn close to 2021 if not for the weather. I know Kevin; it didn't affect Kevin as much, um, but man, we got because we we booked so many like family things. And I'll tell you, a family with kids, they're not if, if it's a, a chance of a, a downpour, they are not going to book a tour. You know, they're going to cancel. Like they, they, it needs to be a certain climate. As a dad, I get that. I don't want to drag all my kids out with the potential of it. Now, I might, if I was just with a bunch of friends, I might take the chance and take a boat out because I don't care if it rains. I, I'm not going to deal with that. So there is a um, there is some benefits to renting boats um, when it's kind of a spotty weather. Well, except for when it's like really bad weather. You know, like last thing you want is somebody out there who doesn't know what they're doing on a boat, man. Like, God, that, <laughs> that's the one thing we did. We, we got a lot more people out in the actual where they were going and hanging out. And we had a lot more, you know, just because the the weather was spotty. And I didn't know if it would go. It, spotty can change to bad pretty fast. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we're, we're just about at time. Uh, and I just want to thank uh, Chris for coming back on the show. He's one of our few repeat guests. Uh, Chris, how are people get in touch with you if they have any questions about being a marina owner or operator <laughs> yeah um bureau tackle and marina at gmail is my email that is kind of my general go-to um or they can hit us up on instagram at bureau tackle or facebook at bureau tackle cool and he's in the facebook group join our facebook group yeah, yeah if you guys got any questions about your your marina or like you know chris is going to be the go-to guy especially if uh you know and he's always super um super generous with his time and asking questions and stuff like that. I'm not saying like blow up Chris's email, (laughs) you know, at least questions or something like that. But, you know, by, by all means, you can tag him in a group if you have a question, I'm sure. And he, he loved to, he loves the wax, man. He's a good dude. We love having you. Chris Chris. is going to be at the water sport conference in September. He's going to be at arrival. I'm assuming arrival, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you have an opportunity to connect with him and, and, uh, dude, this is the, we just kind of talked about this in the last podcast about how great it is be able to go to these conferences and talk with people who've been doing this a long time, who have not a lot of knowledge and are willing to share that. So do not take that for granted. Um, well, we thank you all for joining us for uh, the next last 30 minutes. And as always, keep it awkward.